Hi, Anna Bartholomew here. Welcome back. Well, this week I came across a pretty bold quote by Robert Kiyosaki, Rich Dad Poor Dad. It's time to sell, period. So this video will explore nine different reasons that will help you make and decide for yourself whether it is or it isn't time to sell. Buckle up, let's go. And before we get started, I'm Anya Bartholomew, your local Utah real estate agent. And if there is anything I can do for you, my information is below. The first reason that might indicate that it's time to sell is the fact that's very widely spread on the Internet. And that's the foreclosure moratorium and September 30th, right? What it means, however, if we look a little bit more clearly into, uh, into the description, so it means that FHA, USDA, VA loans, all of those loans, the deadline for forbearance agreements ends to apply for those forbearance agreements it ends on September 30th. And if you ever, 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 if you've ever dealt with loan modifications, forbearance agreements, you know for a fact that we're about 12 months into the work in progress before any decisions will be made. And to make sure we're not leaving out Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac, well, these deadlines is not even in the picture. So there's no deadline. You can still apply for forbearance agreements with those loans. Consideration number two, during the worst of the pandemic, during that, you know, pretty hard, difficult uh, economic year for, for the United States and for the entire world, there were 7.3 million loans in forbearance agreements, you know, in pre-foreclosure. And as of right now, 12 months later, when the economy is much, much, much better, only 20% of them are left into this program, the other ones actually, um, I'll refer this a little bit later, but anyway, so if another 12 months we have 20% of 20%, it's not going to be a lot of inventory flooding the market to make a crash. Number three, and it's actually very significant how 80% of those default mortgages got cured over the period of 12 months. So here's the statistics. 28% got deferral. 22% actually continued making payment and never really went into default. So now then 16% opted out without any plan, but then 12% simply reinstated without any government assistance. And finally, 11% ended up with a loan modification and 7% refinanced or basically paid off the mortgage either through refinancing or through selling those homes. That, you know, that's not a very significant number. And out of the entire, the, you know, amount of those 80% that cured, actually only 1% went into foreclosure. That is not a very big number. Number four, very significant difference between 2008 and 2021. In 2008, 40%, only 40% of uh, loans actually had at least 10% of equity. And given the recent home prices rally in 2021, 98% of homes, uh, you know, loans uh, on those homes actually have at least 10% of equity, which is more than enough to put them on the market and sell them off without foreclosures or short sales. Number five, big picture number. In 2008, the population of the U.S. was 300 million, and the loans in default, like 10 million, we had 10 million foreclosures. That's about 3%. And in 2021, the population is 330,000, right? That's how much we grew. And uh, the 1.6 million accounts for less than 1%. Number six, another significant difference. In 2008, we had only four or five different plans to work out something with the homeowner in default, which was a short sale, a closure, didn't you, right? You know, the jingle mail, mail of course. Uh, then the loan modification and then reinstatement. However, in 2021, there were so many options um, added to, you know, to the mix of solutions, including 360 uh, days, you know, payment and then 25, um, 25% decrease of the payment and then the 12 month deferring payments. And I mean, there were so many options and we're not even mentioning 40 year mortgage that was added into the mix. So the, the number of solutions that the lenders are willing to provide to the homeowners in default 11 years later is at least double. 
Now, since we're trying to answer the question, is it time to sell or not, I want to bring to your consideration, is this such a very, very important statistics like home prices has been really, really insignificantly, but yet as a trend, they've been decreasing. Days on the market, you know, has been increasing. The inventory actually over the last eight months doubled. So we are in the seller's market, and we also know that the seller market is not going to be forever. So these are also important factors to consider where you are deciding for yourself self, right? So not listening to anybody, just deciding for yourself whether it's a good time to sell or not. And on the other side, to piggyback on that, you know, previous information, we want to talk about latent demand. I really noticed because I track statistics weekly, I noticed that the number of sales uh, from last week to this week actually increased, relatively speaking. I'm just like, you know, tracking weighted averages of those sales, which also means it coincides with the fact that the application, mortgage application, increased by 7%, and it's pretty significant. So we know that there is this latent demand of those more you know savvy buyers who are sitting on the edge waiting out the market and then with every opportunity when the interest rate rate dropped and you know housing inventory increased so they're jumping in in the game pretty quickly so again the point being is it's really important to really watch real estate market you know, week to week, because it is changing quite a bit. And there is an opportunity to play off the seasonality and a little bit of that. So stay tuned. Number nine, it's actually eviction moratorium, which I think a little bit of the wild card, because the statistics and the numbers are not very, you know, explicitly um, disclosed. You know, there are conversations and numbers saying there are eight million of landlords, you know, being in in foreclosure that are sitting on those uh, rental units that are not, you know, when the tenants are not paying rent. The the numbers of uh, rent not paid to the landlords is horrific. I know the government issued four, well, 46 billion, 46 billion in assistance to the landlords, you know, to make payment. But because of our system, only 3 billion has been dispersed. So there is an opportunity, probably a little bit of uh, more inventory come up, coming up out on the market through some of the landlords who will be putting those, you know, things on the market. But at the same time, they too can enter the forbearance agreements and they too don't have, there is not a lot of options of actually to, you know, play the game of um, dollars, um, you know, inflation, basically, therefore, selling assets is an easy thing to do. But then, you know, what are you going to trade off for dollars sitting in the bank? So therefore, you know, we might see a little bit of more. But even if we double the inventory right now, Realtor.com has 1.33 million inventory. Uh, overall for the United States. So even if we see doubling of this inventory, we are right now about one month supply of inventory when the sellers market. But in order for the market to be a balanced market, we need to be close to four months. So if we double the inventory, you know, over the next year with the landlords and a little bit of those evictions and a little bit of those foreclosures coming up, we're still going to be two months supply of inventory, which is still half of what's needed to be in a balanced market. We're not even talking about bias market. Um, and it's actually the number is four to six months. So I don't know. I've given you the information that I have access to. You can easily find it, but you know, I just did a little bit of research. So you decide for yourself. I'll be very, very curious to see, to know what you guys think uh, is going to, you know, is it time to sell, not time to sell? Of course, it's an individual decision, but overall, what do you think? Let me know. And as always, if you find this information helpful or useful or insightful in some way, please feel free to subscribe. And again, if there's anything I can do for you, you know my information is below. Thanks you for watching.